veil of the tape, and you are going to see two heavily muscled, well-conditioned heavyweights in the ring tonight. And here's a look at the record. 32 wins, no losses. The one draw was against Franz. Let's check it. Axel Schultz. And 19 KOs for Akinwande, who did not used to be regarded as a heavy puncher, but has greatly improved his right hand in the past year under Don Turner. He met with members of both houses of parliament, so now we get ready to learn, is he a lord of the ring or is he as common as cat litter? Soon to find out. 30 wins, the one loss to Oliver McCall was sort of avenged in McCall's walk around in February. 25 KOs for the hard-punching Lennox Lewis. Your referee working for the 97th time in a world title belt, Mills Lane. Okay, gentlemen, uh, I've had the instruction. Manny, if he goes right here, I'm not going to call it low. Right here, it's going to be okay. Okay, Don? You've been through all the instructions at one time. I expect a tough, clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. Any questions from the challenger, Chief Second? Champion, Chief Second. Let's get it on! Round one begins. Should note here that it's a very small ring for big guys, especially about 17 and a half feet, which should favor Lewis, George. I think so. Once you get the ring closer, where the big guys, no matter how big they are, you got to throw punches at all times. There's no room to move around and look, especially when you have this kind of reach. Well, it'll certainly favor Lewis and his harder punching if he can be aggressive. And he's come out aggressively, initiating the exchanges with Akinwande in the first 30 seconds of the fight. Akinwande has been told by his trainer, Don Turner, to move forward as he throws the jab. Likewise, Emmanuel Stewart is trying to get Lennox Lewis to be much more aggressive, to throw a George Foreman or Sonny Liston-style jab and drive his body through behind it. Lennox in the past has had a, had a habit of doing what Larry Merchant calls fighting from the back seat, throwing the jab but leaning backward as he does. Lewis trying to assert himself here, and Akawande has to put some hurt on him to, to drive him away. Let him go, let him go, Henry, let him go. So now Akinwande will try to establish the jab, which is his key to winning the fight. Lennox hey, Lewis will have the advantage of the left Let jab. Just got to forget about throwing a right hand and left hook and just stick with the left hand. First tackle of the fight. <laughs> and it certainly is striking to see these two very large men in such work a small out, ring. Work out, work out. I think it's a mistake for Lennox Lewis to consider all that talk about get getting more aggressive because then you get off. This guy is a well-schooled national Olympic champion. He knows how to box. Take your time. Set everything up by jab. And you can do it. Let him go. Let him go. Let him go. Come on. So you've never felt that the way Lewis fights Work is bad on, for on, him on. as an attraction. It's great. He doesn't have short arms. He's not going to be able to get quick lock, knockouts from underneath and things of that nature. He has long arms. He's got to fight within the... Uh, and what you can do. Why do long arms mean that it would take him longer to knock people out? Oh, the guy can see that long arm coming. You got lots of time to get away. A very decisive round for Lewis. You're looking good. He's establishing yourself good. Time, box time. numbers show relatively low punch out put okay, for both on. fighters in round number one. Let's see if they step up the activity in round two. Akinwande, urged by his corner to listen to instruction, and he may forget what they told him after that right hand by Lewis. A good right hand, right on top, which is what Lennox Lewis has been doing his whole career. How you jab, load up for a right hand like a baseball pitcher. He does pull the right hand straight over the top, George. Get back to me, come on. Let him go. So again, George going against what has been widespread opinion regarding Lewis. A lot of people complaining about the way he paused with his jab. George says that's the way for him to maintain the power in his right hand. That's what you do now. One point off here. One point removed from Akinwande. He's, he's saying to Akinwande, you're here to fight, not to hug. There's another hug. Step back. 
Well, Lewis has been talking for days about how he expected Akinwande to wrap him in a bear hug, and Akinwande has proven true to form. Hey, 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 back it up. One step back. Come on. Let you see go. that referee? Come on. His lightweight, he'll wear out sooner or later pushing these big guys <laughs> back. <laughs> and that's what he's hoping, the big tall guy. Let him go. Let him go. It's time. You go here. Time. Come up here. Don't you tell him. You need to fight, or I'm going to chase you. And you can do better than that. You understand? Uh, hey, Brad, this come on. Fight. Let's go. Come on. This come is on. the way it's going to have to be in boxing. The referee's going to have to step up these days. Never going back to the days of gentlemanship. These guys are going to break every rule. Well, we're two weeks removed from what's likely to become the most famous disqualification in the history of the sport, and Lane is threatening to end another heavyweight championship bout with a disqualification. Well, remember earlier I said he might try to hug him to death. And you heard Don Turner saying back in one day, don't let this guy disqualify you. So back in one day must respond. Mills Lane is being awful careful. The greatest danger of him stepping in there and getting hit himself. These guys are hitting while they are hugging. This looks like a mating dance between two boa constrictors. Mr. Olympia. Mr. Olympia. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Lee Haney. Lee Haney. Lee yeah, Haney one of those apart. Otherwise, this referee is going to faint. Well, Mills is pretty dogged. Round two comes to a close, and Akinwande is flirting with disqualification danger. That's all right, man. You all right? Let's get out there and fight this guy. Fight. He's going to throw his best shot at you. He ain't all got nothing. Fight. Fight. Here we see as Akinwande clutched without really ever trying to fight in that instance, and a point was taken away from him. I think Lennox Lewis should just kind of stay with it. Punch the guy, wait for him to hug. When he lets go, punch him again, wait for him to hug. Why exert yourself? Hey, hey, hey. Look at When I take a step back, you step back. Understand? Come on. I can wonder landed a good right hand this time. A little short one inside. He can counter. You heard Emmanuel Stewart saying, I hope the guy doesn't get smart and start throwing punches up the middle. And now Lewis backs Akinwande off again with a jab and a right hand. Lewis flashed a good uppercut and a left hook in some of his recent fights. And there's an attempt at the right uppercut right there. Akinwande grabs and holds again. Every time, George, and I think that Lewis should play right into it. Hit him and stop exerting himself trying to push him away. 12 rounds of that can wear him out also. Good quick jab by Akinwande lands there. Lewis almost went down from her right hand as Akinwande was pushing on his shoulder. So now Lennox's balance seems to desert him a little bit. I thought it might have been a knockdown, Jim. It was a surprise quick right hand as he moved in. His knee may have raised the canvas. It was close, that's for sure. But not ruled a knockdown, obviously. And now Akinwande is beginning to get into the fight if he can curb his instinct to hold. Let me tell you, that holding when you're a heavyweight can drive you and burn you out. After a couple of rounds, you may even faint from pushing and shoving. Who gets tired or faster, the Lennox holder Lewis or the holdee? Yeah. Lennox Lewis is throwing all the power punches, so he's probably the one in danger of getting tired here. Punch out, man. Come on, work out. Punch out. Lewis remembering to go to the body as they hold and clinch around the ring. We'll see if that serves him well over a long period of time. Well, he's fighting a very thin guy in Akawanda. He's accustomed to guys looking at his thin body and beating on it with those shots. So that's not going to bother him. Nevada State Athletic Commission's Commission officials sitting at ringside and no doubt hoping against hope that they don't see another disqualification in a heavyweight title fight in their state. Lewis goes to the body, and effectively so. Effectively so, you're right. As round three comes to a close. Hey, 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 
to dig the left hook to the body, okay? Start it and start, start going with the left hook to the body first, and anything you want out there, but go with the left hook to the body, okay? Let's see if we can find out if that was a knockdown or a push down or... It really wasn't a knockdown. It was just the, the, the pressure of the body that pushed him down, it seemed, but it could have been. I mean, I don't know what that is, George. What is it? Oh, it's right on top of the head. And those kind, when you're not accustomed to being hit there, hit there because you're taller, they have some effect on you. In round three, CompuBox numbers give Lewis credit for landing 21 punches, many of them body shots. Akinwande landed only eight, threw only 26. And there he is, clinching Lewis's head under his left arm. Could it be, George, that Akinwande's arms are so long that he just cannot resist his urge to hold? He can't do anything else. He evidently, he's not a short puncher, so when he's close, all he can do to protect himself is to hold. Now Akinwande begins to land that one-two more effectively. And the crowd begins to express its displeasure. Lewis tries a wild roundhouse right. Akinwande wraps him up. It ain't going to be pretty. Ain't going to be pretty. And we're going to have a referee who's very tired. And Lewis, it looks as though he's almost worn out already. No doubt about it. Wobbling around. When we get a six foot five inch guy against a six foot seven inch guy, let's go back to the shorter heavyweights. They're more fun to watch. No, it's the rope. The ring is very small. There's no room to run. Should it have been bigger? I think so. But Lewis is making all the effort here. I mean, give him credit. He's trying to make a fight out of He's doing the best he can. You know, and, and it takes two to fight. And a professional fighter, if all he's interested in is hugging and squeezing and holding on, there's not a whole lot you can do about it. It's hard to imagine how much longer Lane can go without being forced to disqualify Akinwande. He's in an awful bad position. It's terrible. Step back, knees. Step back. Hey. Step back. Now, come on. Lane is in a terrible position, and so by extension is the Nevada State Athletic Commission. The body punches by Lewis are the most effective right now. Well, he's winning every round, George. I mean, he's wouldn't you ass assume that Lewis has won the first three rounds? No doubt about it, but he's also playing in the part of the old bull when the matador is sticking that thing over his neck, and he's being held like that. Eventually, things have to happen bad to you. You know, Lewis is not a great infighter, but Akawande hasn't got a clue about what infighting is about. Solid punch there. Round four comes to a close. The crowd hopes for something better. Lewis tries to quell his mounting frustration. Compu box numbers say that in the first four rounds, Henry Akinwande has thrown 95 punches. That's a total of 23 per round, or an average of 23 per round. We saw a heavyweight a couple of months ago, Ike Bayabuchi, who throws 95 punches in an average round. Lewis Corner gave him some good advice. Stay short. Harold Letterman, quickly, how do you have the first four rounds? Larry, I got about a million things to say about this fight. Three rounds to one, 39-36, Lennox Lewis. Let me tell you, if Henry Eckenwalde keeps on holding, it's coming soon. I figure another two, three rounds, he's out of here. Larry, Lewis you got is in a, an embarrassing situation. Yeah, he he just had a big controversy disqualification in the state. He just don't <laughs> want to do that quick. Look, he looks like an Oreo cookie there, mixed in between those two big guys. <laughs> Mills Lane is earning his money these days. Time. Second time that Lane has called Don Turner up. You tell him next time he's gone, okay? You tell him. He's gone. Hey, Henry, he's getting ready to disqualify you. you need to fight. Don't let him disqualify you. He's about to you drop him. dead, man. All you got to do is fight him. Let's go. Fight him back. Get out of there. Well, it couldn't be any clearer than that. who just don't have any other defense. That's all there is to it. He just does not have any other defense.
you wonder what could be going through Akinwande's mind. I guess you're right, George. He's, he's trying to protect himself from heavy punches, yeah. and he doesn't know any other he's, way. He's used to being able to fight with room between him and his opponents. He's been able to dictate that, and Lewis is not letting him dictate the geometry of the fight. Well, so he is utterly confused. 366 days ago, July 11, 1996, Galata disqualified while pounding Riddick Bowe in Madison Square Garden. Four months later, Atlantic City Convention Center, Galata It's the end of the fight. We've had another disqualification, yep. Jim. I was just about to get there. There you go. That's the fourth major disqualification in the heavyweight division in 366 days. It was inevitable. There was nothing else Lane could do. And I want to say, yep. give a, a gold crown to Mills Lane. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Mills Lane, after repeated warnings, point deductions, warned the challenger Henry Ekinwandi that he had to fight and stop holding. He had to disqualify the challenger, the winner and still WBC heavyweight champion of the world, Lennox Lewis. So Lewis, who picked up the WBC title for the second time in February when Oliver McCall wouldn't fight against him, now retains the title as Henry Akinwande refuses to stop holding. And Lewis is once again denied the spectacular knockout that he thinks he needs and a lot of people around him believe he needs to galvanize public opinion in his favor. Well, he's doing a good job with his career. He hasn't had any trouble with the government. <laughs> of course, he hasn't gone to prison. And so he, a lot of controversy will escape him. He's a nice guy. So he shouldn't worry about that. The big crowds will come if he keeps winning. If they're qualified in this manner, they'll assume, hey, maybe he's doing something to make these guys Hold Congratulations against Lennox. Are you frustrated that for the second time in a row a guy has basically quit on you? Yeah, I was, I was disappointed because obviously he didn't want to fight. You know, I was trying to fight. What can you do if a man doesn't want to fight you? All he did was hold. All right, let me ask you, Emmanuel Stewart. You've been urging Lennox on to be less of a chess player or if he's a chess player to be a knight instead of a bishop. Yeah. Are you satisfied with what he did here even under these circumstances? I was very satisfied. Lennox did all that he could do. He, he made it a physical fight. He crowded uh, Akin one day and he took his boxing skills away. He tested his mental strength and that was what I was satisfied heart, with. Heart. Hot. Hot, hot. <laughs> what would you like to do next, Lennox? Basically, I just want to uh, go against the next challenger. You know, uh, Evander Holyfield is out there. He said there's nobody out there to fight him. I want to fight Evander Holyfield. All right, if, if Evander Holyfield wants to fight Michael Mora, would you fight George Foreman? Who, who would you fight? I'll fight anybody. I've never ducked anybody. Everybody keeps on ducking me. I don't know why, but they keep on ducking me. But I'll fight anybody out there. Basically, I want to go after all the titles. I want to unify the titles. Thank you very much, Lennox Lewis. Tell us what you thought went on there. You were warned to stop holding. You couldn't stop holding. The referee stopped the fight. Give us your view of that. I didn't think um, most of the holding is, um, is my fault because uh, we, all, we both uh, tried to go forward. And uh, I mean, he's tall and I'm tall, you know. So there's no, I mean, we don't, we can, I can't find a way to walk inside and I started to get close to him. And uh, by the time I realized it, the reverie was um, that wanted me, you know, that I said, I mean, I should stop holding. Because, I mean, the reverie step, I mean, sometimes step, I mean, step, I mean, step backward. I try to make a step backward, but he's not making any step. All right, so that, would you say that he didn't give you any room to box and that's what caused the, these wrestling matches? Uh, I think uh, that is part of it. You know, but uh, right now, I don't have anything to say. Uh, you must be very, very disappointed after trying so hard for so long to get here. Um, I'm very disappointed. You know, but um, I'll come back again. <laughs>